everybody. Um, little bit about me. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking all of you for showing up. It's, it's um, truly humbling to be in front of you today and just, um, you know, share my story and um, deliver a ton of good, good content for you guys, alrighty? Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me and before we get cranking. So as you can hear, I've got a very weird accent and I'm a very rude and raw Aussie, okay? Now, how I've established um, that reputation of being a rude and raw Aussie is quite simple. If I see something that looks like shit, okay, and it smells like shit, I call it out as being shit. And in today's day and age, a lot of people do not like to get called out on the shit that they do, that they do, right? Um, and I, I'm the type of person that calls out everyone on the shit that they do. So I've got a reputation of being very rude and raw in, in my business practices, okay? Um, I am a public speaker. Uh, one of my biggest fears was public speaking. Um, and even to this day, I get very nervous before I stand in front of you guys. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster. I've got to do all kinds of different routines just to be able to stand up and speak in front of you guys. So I'm not, uh, I'm not trained to speak in public. I don't have any sales pitches, um, but um, I love speaking in public. Um, I'm going to be an author very soon. I'm writing a book right now, which is called Telling Without Selling. Okay, It's a book about how we have created what we have created to this day, my business and myself. And, and I'm going to touch on that in, in, in more depth as we go on. So I always like to tell folks, I haven't sold the property to date. I've had people begging me to buy it. And that book is just about how we've created so much hype and buzz around who we are and what we do um, and all that fun stuff. I quit school at the age of 14 and I played professional soccer at the age of 18, so I've got no formal education whatsoever, guys. I type with two fingers like that, like chop suey typing. My math sucks, my grammar is even worse. I mean, it's an absolute joke. It takes me 45 minutes to compose a basic email, so if you want to speak to me, don't freaking email me. Um, email me scheduling a phone call, I'll be happy to chat to you guys on the phone, alrighty? I have been involved in over 350 real estate transactions to date, Hundred of those real estate deals, I've been involved with my personal funds, okay? What, what, what I mean by that is I've either bought the property, renovated it, or I've been involved in some kind of capacity in those hundred deals with my own money. The other 250 real estate deals I've been involved with, either in an advisory role, um, or, or, you know, I've had uh, someone that's um, been a part of, of a higher cash flow, you know, asking me for particular advice on a particular transaction and whatnot. So to date, I've been involved in over 350 real estate deals. Um, I'm proud to say that I'm the owner of a multi-million dollar real estate investment company called Ohio Cashflow, okay? Um, and um, it's, as I said, it's truly humbling to be where we are today. We started Ohio Cashflow two years ago, um, and we're really moving and shaking. We're doing great things. We've got two offices right now, 10 full-time staff. We're working in five different markets, um, and I'm super pumped up with um, what the future's um, going to bring. Um, and I want to stress this. There is nothing for sale here today, Okay absolutely nothing for sale, guys. I do not, do, I, I do not speak in public um, to have any sales pitches or sales slides, okay? The content in my presentations is, is for you, okay? So I want to assist you guys to get to wherever you need to be because I strongly believe in helping others get to where they need to be before I can get to where I need to be, okay? So there is nothing for sale here today. It is strictly content-based. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to shout out. I'm more than happy to answer them and just correspond with you guys. So um, yeah, let's have fun. Let's, um, let's get going. Let's get deliver a ton of content here. Um, there is no limit to what you can do. The only limit is you, okay? That's a little quote um, that I absolutely love. So there is no limit to what you can do. The only limit is you, all righty? Disclaimer. Hey, quiet over there. Disclaimer, okay? Take a, take a photo of that. Um, Gordon Ramsay, my absolute idol. I love this guy. I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen any of my videos, the Yellow Ladder Tip of the Day, or, or checked out our YouTube channel. I mean, as I said, I'm very rude. I'm very loud. I'm very raw. I love this guy. I love his passion. It makes sense what he says, even though he's very rude, but it really does make sense what he says. So, um, guys, what you're about to hear today, I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying that I'm wrong, okay? I'm just here to share my perceptions, opinions, and experiences with you, 
Let me repeat that. I'm here to share my perceptions, opinions, and experiences with you guys, okay? You can take it on board and implement it in your everyday life and in your business and in your real estate endeavors, or you can call me a complete asshole rude wanker and not implement anything. It is entirely up to you guys, okay? Um, and check out my t-shirt, okay? So disclaimer is there. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to have any lawsuits coming from you guys. If I am, I'll just give you, you know, the details of my 19 attorneys and you can contact them. Um, okay, let's get going with the next slide. Okay, people equal profits. I speak to a ton of investors on a daily basis from all over the world, okay? And I mean from, from you know, Korea to Madagascar to Australia to the UK. I mean, you name it. I literally have five to ten phone calls every single day with investors from all over the world. And they all freaking ask me these questions about the stats and demographics and the market trend and the vacancy rates and the population growth. And it drives me freaking mad. It absolutely drives me mad, right? And I always like to tell them, guys, you are getting it the complete, you're getting it completely wrong, okay? You have to focus on the people first because teamwork makes the dream work as we have down there below, okay? So forget about the stats, forget about the demographics, focus on the people first. And, and there's, a little, there's a little tagline that I like to say here, right? If you buy the best house in the best street, in the best area, that has the best capital growth predictions, but your property manager is incompetent or a cheat, well, guess what? You're gonna lose money right? You're going to lose money. Now, if you buy in the heart of Detroit, right, in the heart of Detroit, but you have people on the ground that have your best interest at heart and that you can trust and that are local market experts, you will make money because they're not going to steal from you. They're not going to cheat. They're not going to lie, right? Yes, they might have to collect rent in bulletproof vests and a hammer and shotguns, right? But they're not going to lie. They're not going to cheat and you will make money. And I know millions, sorry, I know people right now in Detroit, in the heart of Detroit, making millions and millions of dollars for that particular reason. So forget about the stats and demographics. Please focus on the people, okay? People, people, people. The biggest mistake that I made when I started my journey as a real estate investor um, was investing based on hope, okay? Investing based on capital appreciation. I'm gonna to touch on that in the next slide and trusting the wrong people. Guys, I bought turnkey properties in upper state New York and I completely lost my ass on it. And I mean, I was buying from Australia, okay, trusting the wrong people that were giving me the wrong advice to buy in the wrong freaking areas, okay, and I literally lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of personal cash, okay, to these sharks, to these assholes, right, along with another three to five hundred thousand dollars in opportunity costs because I wasn't able to, to, to purchase the particular properties that came across my desk because my existing cash was tied up in these third properties in Upper State New York, okay? So the biggest mistake that I ever made was first of all trusting the wrong people and investing based on hope that the properties are going to go up in value more than what I was actually losing on my um, monthly mortgage repayments. Now, I'm going to track back a little bit here. When I first started my journey as a real estate investor and an entrepreneur, I was building my portfolio in Australia, similar to what a lot of folks were doing here on the East Coast and the West Coast, right? They were buying high, refinancing, right? Using that equity from the refinance to purchase another property, and they were hoping that, you know, the, the, the market is just going to keep going up. Then the market tanked. They got caught with their pants down because they were underwater on their mortgages and boom, 2008 happened and we had this big global financial crisis. I was doing the exact same things that folks were doing here in 2006. I was doing that in Australia. Now, I literally built a portfolio um, worth over a million dollars within six months' time of buying my first property and I caught a ton of attention from the media there. They would call me this you know, young whiz kid. But what people didn't know is that I was actually losing on, on my, I was losing money every single month on the mortgage repayments, right? Because I had to cover the cost. If a tenant vacated the property, I had to put my own hand in my own pocket to cover those monthly, monthly mortgage repayments, right? So those were the biggest mistakes that I made, guys. Basing my decisions on hope, right? Basing my decisions um, on, on people and trusting the wrong people, okay? So as I said, I'm gonna touch on um, capital appreciation uh, in the next slide um, and um, I'm going to go to this next bullet point right now. So the four things, excuse me, the four things that you guys need to look for in people before you enter any relationship, okay? Um, before you look at doing business with them are these four things, okay? Number one, loyalty. Number two, honesty. Number three, no greed. And number four, respect, okay? 
Loyalty, honesty, no greed, and respect. Write these things down on your whiteboard in your office or on your freaking kitchen whiteboard and literally list all of the people that you are affiliated right now in business, okay? And write their name down and then see how many things you can tick off. If one of these you can't tick off, I'm telling you right now, the relationship is not going to work. And if anyone has gotten screwed over in this business, it is me, because I go into every relationship with an open heart and open mind, no matter how many times I've gotten screwed over, right? I just don't believe that. It's the same as having a relationship, right? If any one of you has ever been cheated on and then you never want to love again, well, you're never going to find the love of your life, right? Just like I found the love of my life. So you can't go into a relationship with a closed heart and a closed mind just because you got screwed in the past, okay? So as I said, if anyone has gotten screwed in real estate, um, it's me. And what I've found is I've figured out that these four things are crucial to any relationship. Now, that could be with um, your realtor, your contractor, your accountant, your mortgage broker, whoever it may be, I suggest that you strongly look for these four traits. Loyalty, honesty, no greed and respect, and use that little chart. See how many things you can tick off, okay? And you should be able to quite easily evaluate, you know, if someone is loyal, if they're honest, if they're not greedy, and if they're respectful. Okay? I'm sure you'll be able to um, evaluate their persona when it comes to that. And last but not least, guys, um, the magic question. I love this one. Okay? The magic question. Now, this freaking question has saved me so much money, it is, it is ridiculous. The magic question is this. Okay? Are you willing to wait six, nine, or 12 months of building a trust and relationship with me before we do any business together, okay? Are you willing to wait six, nine, or 12 months of building a trust and relationship with me before we do any business together, okay? Everyone, and I mean absolutely everyone in today's day and age is about instant gratification. I want your money right now, right? And if you don't give it to me right now, I'm gonna move on to someone else and I'm gonna get their money, period. My friends, that is not how it works, right? It's about delayed gratification. If you want to get to where you need to be in your real estate endeavors, right, one or two properties is not going to cut it. One or two months is not going to cut it. Five, 10, 15, 20 plus years. That's how long it takes to literally build your financial future if you want to do it in a, in, a, in a sustainable and low risk way, right? So why would you want to work with someone that is all about right now and taking your money right now and putting pressure on you like there's no tomorrow? I personally think that is bullshit. I think that you need to have people on board and people on your side that are willing to get to know you and you to get to know them, that are willing to educate you on who they are, on what they do, on their products, right, on their after service, on their entire process. Because as I said, it's going to take three, five, ten plus years to get you to where you need to be. These people that you're working with, they have to have your best interest at heart. And that could be anyone. As I said, it could be your mortgage broker. It could be a contractor, right? Title company, right? All of the key players necessary to get, help you guys get financial freedom and to live life on your terms, right? So please ask that question. When you ask that question, you will eliminate 99.9% .9 of the shady operators. Because as I said, in today's day and age, everyone is about instant gratification. They want your money right now. And they're going to put pressure on you to get your money right now any way they know how. As I said, that is absolute bullshit to me. Okay? So ask that question. You'll save yourself a lot of money and a lot of heartache. That's a promise. Good so far? All right. Can I start dropping a few F-bombs? Okay, thank you. I'll try. I'll try. I'll, 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 I'm, I'll, I did one freaking, right? I, I, I wanted to drop it so freaking bad. You got no idea. I'll save them for New York, right? Shit. Hey, there she is. Look at her. We hate the queen, by the way. We absolutely hate the queen. It's, it's not funny. Like, I don't even know why I put her there, but anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, guys. So here we... I'm bloody sweating. Hey, what should we do about that? No. I'm not going to take my shirt off. I wish. Okay, so capital appreciation versus, versus cash flow, guys. Going back to my biggest mistake, right? Going back to my biggest mistake. Um, I was investing in Australia, as I explained to you guys, um, for the purpose of being able to call myself a real estate investor and an entrepreneur, right? It was awesome. At every barbecue, I was like, I'm a real estate investor. Whenever I went out, I'm an entrepreneur, you know? I'm like, can I buy you a drink? I picked up a ton of chicks. It was great. But... That is not why we invest in real estate, right? We do not invest in real estate 
to be able to call ourselves real estate investors and to be able to call ourselves entrepreneurs, right? We invest in real estate to supplement the current income that we're getting from a job that we don't want to be working in and to start living life on our terms. That's why we invest in real estate, so we can tell our boss to go and shove it and genuinely do what you want, when you want, and where you want, okay? So with that being said, guys, I want to start off with, I want to start off with this. You have to know your end goal, okay? You have to know why you invest in real estate. What are your end goals? So don't go down the path of becoming a real estate investor without having an established end goal in mind because you're just going to be on, you're going to be on a path to nowhere, right? You have to know where you're going. You have to have an established end goal in mind, right? So for example, let's just hypothetically say that you need $100,000 in passive income, right, to start living life on your terms, okay? Now, you have to know the time frame of that end goal. So you know that you need $100,000 in passive income to start living life on your terms. Now you have to establish an end goal time frame. Now what that end goal time frame is going to do, it is going to dictate your risk factor, okay? If you want to achieve $100,000 in passive income in two years, you bet your ass your investments are going to have to be very high risk because, because that's a large sum of money, right, to achieve in passive income if you're just an average American citizen that makes... Forty or fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, I think that's the average salary here in the U.S. Right now, if your um, end goal time frame is longer, okay, it will give you um, uh, you'll be able to do less riskier investments to achieve your end goal time frame. Okay, so once again, um, we're talking about cash flow here, guys, not capital appreciation. Okay, I'm going to touch on that in a little bit more. So knowing your end goal turn determine your risk. Okay, so what I suggest all of you guys do here, you have to know why you invest in real estate. You have to know what your end goal is. You have to know how much money you need in passive income to live life on your terms, to support your loved ones, to support yourself, right? Otherwise, if you don't know these things, why are you investing in real estate? You're just going to be like me. You're going to be investing in real estate to call yourself a real estate investor and an entrepreneur and to pick up chicks. Stupid, right? Absolutely stupid. So don't do that. Know your end goal. Know the time frame of your end goal and know... Um, um, and that will determine your risk, okay? Now, the next little bullet point here is um, uh, 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 it's base your decisions on the number in the deal, okay? So what we have done here is we have established our end goal, right? We have established the time frame of our end goal. We know the cash flow figure that we need to start living life on our terms. Now, we need to evaluate every particular transaction, right? So this is where capital appreciation is bullshit, right? Because capital appreciation will not enable you to live life on your terms, right? Cash flow will enable you to live life on your terms because the cash flow is, is what you can use to buy yourself a car, to buy yourself a boat, to buy yourself whatever the hell you want to buy yourself, right? So when you have a particular opportunity presented to you, okay, know your purchase price, know your monthly rent, times that by 12, deduct all of your costs, your property management fees, your taxes, your insurance costs, any other vacancy statistics that you want to throw in there, capex, you buy gum at Walmart, I don't give a shit, deduct that too, right? And then figure out what your net return on investment is. That net return has to get you a step closer to achieving your end goal. Okay? It is simple. It is so freaking simple. I'm sick and tired of seeing all of these bullshit statistics. Okay? How much do you want in cash flow to live life on your terms? Every single property that you buy has to get you a step closer to reaching your end cash flow figure, period. It's simple, right? Market predictions equal speculation. No one has a crystal ball, okay? And that is why you have to base your decisions on the numbers in the deal. Forget about capital appreciation predictions, okay? No one can predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen in the next two minutes. How the hell can we predict the next 10 years, right? We're going to look at market demographics and statistics and vacancy and all that bullshit. Once again, cash flow is what is going to give you financial freedom. It is going to allow you to live life on your terms and not work a nine to five and tell your boss to go and shove it and kick it up the ass, right? So why would you invest in real estate based on capital appreciation, right? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense, guys. It doesn't make any sense. So forget about capital appreciation, forget about predictions. Now, I'm going to give you a quick example here, the type of predictions 
that you can implement in your, in your portfolios, okay? So I just bought a house um, next to a hospital in Toledo, okay? Toledo, Ohio. Pro Medica Toledo Hospital, the biggest and richest employer in town. This house, right, is literally across the road from a bundle of houses, okay, on a street across this one that the hospital has bought, paying seven times the market value and knocked every single freaking house down. Well, guess what? The dinger here, as dumb as he is quitting school at 14, he bought that freaking house for dirt cheap. So I've already got in my hands on particular plans of what the Toledo Hospital is going to be doing, and they've got plans over the next 5, 10, and 15 years to completely redevelop that area, right? So I am predicting that one day, Mr. Doctor is going to knock on my door and say, hey, Dingo, I want to buy a house, and I'll pay seven times what it's worth, right? So those are the only times when you should invest based on predictions that you're going to sell the property for much, much more than what it's worth. If you've done your due diligence on a particular employer, if you know that there's a new shopping mall happening you know, next door, and that could in return stimulate growth. Otherwise, whatever you hear in the media, whatever you read in the papers, forget about it, it is bullshit. Okay? I touched on before that teamwork makes the dream work. Right? People equal profits. Speak to the people on the ground. Do not trust what you read um, in the papers or what you see on the media. Make sure that you establish that, those trust and relationships with the key people, and they will either make or break your investment. Okay? Um, if cash is king, then cashless must be queen. Not that queen, though. She sucks. Okay? Oh, okay. Good? Yes? Good? Okay, cool. Are they loud over there? Then I would go there and tell them to shut up if they were. Okay. All right, guys, check this out. The stigma surrounding turnkey real estate. Um, all of you guys are here. Um, uh, uh, I'm hoping you're freaking here because you want to learn more about turnkey real estate. I'm not going to go into detailed explanations about what turnkey real estate is. If you don't know what it is, Google it and find out about it. Um, so check this out. Uh, uh, there's a ton of turnkey companies out there right now um, in, in the market here in the US uh, uh, that, are, that are selling shit, okay? Um, and that is how this particular stigma has surrounded the industry that, that my company is, is currently based in, okay? Um, especially on bigger pockets, it's, a, it's an online forum, it's a very big real estate forum. Um, you'll see if you literally mention that you're a turnkey operator and that you sell turnkey properties, it is game over Red Rover. They crucify you. It is ridiculous how you get crucified, right? And I don't blame them because I lost my ass in Upper State New York too, right? I completely lost my ass and I'm going to tell you how I lost my ass here in a bit, right? Um, so there's a huge stigma surrounding the industry that we are in right now. Um, which is pretty sad, but unfortunately it's true. I, I feel like I'm, you know, the Red Cross most days because I've got, I've got UK investors crying to me on the phone. I've got, you know, investors from Asia crying to me on the phone. I've got my fellow Australians crying to me on the phone. Oh shit, I bought in this crap area and my property's vacant and vandalized. Can you help me out? I'm like, I can't help you out. There's nothing I can do, right? So guys, the biggest stigma surrounding, uh, surrounding turnkey is uh, all turnkey is devil, as I said. As soon as you mention that you're selling a turnkey product, everyone's like running away from you like the plague, okay? It's insane. Now, why there's a huge stigma surrounding turnkey real estate? Because a lot of turnkey companies, and I mean a lot of turnkey companies, sell you shit properties. They really sell you the shit of the shit, guys. It is, it is sad. It is disgusting. What these, what these companies do, they sell you shit properties in the shittest areas you could possibly imagine, okay? I've traveled the country. I got threatened to get shot three times in these shit areas, right? I was called an Australian terrorist once. I was called an Australian trader the other time. And then the third time, this guy wanted to steal my leather jacket. It was a freaking nice leather jacket too, so I get why he wanted to do that. So I know these shit areas, okay? And I definitely know these shit properties. So that's number one. Okay, shit properties in shit areas. Second one is sold at over market value or more than what they're worth. So they're selling you a shit property in a shit area for, ma for way more than what it's worth. Okay, now here's a tip. How you can um, evaluate if you are buying a, a crap property in a, in a crap area is by the market, com market comparables, okay? So if you jump on Zillow, just do a very basic search on Zillow, and what you're going to find is if you can see a lot of inconsistencies in the comparable sales, right? For example, one, one property is selling for $5,000, and then another property across the road is selling for $80,000. There's too much of a price gap there, right? 
for that to be a genuine sale. So most likely, that $80,000 house is being sold to an unsuspecting foreign investor or an unsuspecting investor based on the East Coast or the West Coast. What you want to see is you want to see more of a consistency in those comparable sales. So you're always going to have your twenty, thirty thousand dollars foreclosures, right? But you're going to have more properties that are consistently selling in that sixty to eighty thousand dollars price range. Okay. Once you can see that consistency there in the comparable sales, you will know that you are not dealing with a ghetto ass property. Okay. Most likely, most likely, still conduct your due, due diligence. Okay. So shit properties and shit areas sold to you at way more than what they're worth. And here's the freaking cherry on top. Once they make that sale, because they're focused on, for your, on your money right now, instant gratification, right? If you don't buy now, mate, you're going to lose this ca cash cow. There's no tomorrow, right? You have to buy it today because Ohio is freaking booming. Ohio State University has got a ton of growth there. There's, you know, cranes surrounding downtown and they're building hotels and restaurants and all kinds of stuff. Dayton is booming too, right? So these are the types of pressure tactics that they put on you to buy in their market. Okay, um, so once they have sold you these properties, right, they've put pressure on you because they focus on that instant gratification, not the delayed gratification, they pass you on to a shit property management company. Okay, now, do you guys really think that property management companies make money from 10% fees collecting every month? No, they don't. They start making money from those 10% monthly collected fees, right, once they have a larger volume of scale. And I'm talking 500 plus Okay, and even better, a thousand plus properties in their, in their portfolio. That's when you can actually start churning over a decent sum of money, right, and making a profit in property management. So before they get to that stage, they are most likely nickeling and diming you to death on any little basic fee that you could possibly imagine. I pick up the phone to give you a call, good day, Mr. Investor, how are you? Boop, 30 bucks. I call a plumber to go and clog a toilet, boop, $50. The tenant's not paying the rent because of miscommunication, eviction straight away. I want to get you a new tenant that's going to pay the rent on time and I'm going to charge you one and a half months rent for tenant placement, right? Story of every single investor's life. I hear it over and over and over again, guys. I'm the Red Cross. I should start my own charity. Eddie, you need to help me out with that one, right? Seriously. So let me recap, guys. Shit properties in shit areas sold at over market value and then they pass you on to an outsourced property management company that nickel and dimes you to death. So you might as well invest in your own backyard and get yourself a 5% return on investment because that is the same return that you're going to be getting out of state and you're going to be dealing with a ton of problems also. Okay? So a little quote at the bottom here, guys. The wise man learns from someone else's mistakes. The smart man learns from his own and the stupid one never learns. Okay? I learn from my own mistakes. <laughs> okay. Now, here is a little bit of a slide about a higher cash flow. Okay. And as you can see here, right at the top there, this is not a pitch because I genuinely have nothing to sell, guys. Okay. Um, I have to stress this. I'm very big on this. I think that selling from stage is crap. I don't believe in it. I don't want to do it. I refuse to do it. Um, I am talking about a higher cash flow because it's my baby. I started it from scratch when I was eating peanut butter for breakfast and drinking $1 gas station coffees not too long ago. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Um, not a rags to riches story. I also don't believe in that shit. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of a rundown on how I found my purpose and why in life. Um, so once again, guys, this is not a pitch. Um, once again, guys, this is not a pitch. Okay? It's not a pitch. It is just a little bit of a snippet there about a company that, as I said, I'm, I'm, heavily involved with, I'm heavily involved with. It's my company. I love it. I breathe it. I eat it. I live it. It is everything that I, I love and believe in right now. Okay? So uh, how we have taken the stigma out of turnkey real estate. Okay? And by the way, let me just touch on this. You can implement this with any turnkey company. Okay? With any turnkey company. And a lot of the things that I'm mentioning in here you don't have to implement just with turnkey companies. You can implement with whatever the hell you are looking at doing in real estate, okay? If you're looking at buying and flipping, same philosophy follows, uh, follows you around. Teamwork makes the dream work. Forget about the stats and demographics, right? If you're looking at, I don't know, buying notes, same philosophy follows you around. Teamwork makes the dream work. Forget about the stats and demographics. They're secondary. Teamwork makes the dream work. Please, guys, focus on the people. It is crucial. I never lost money because the numbers in a deal didn't make sense. I lost money because someone screwed me. They lied, they cheated, they were dishonest, disloyal, they were greedy, okay? Not because the numbers didn't make sense. So I'm just touching back on that again. So guys, check this out. Ohio cash flow, quality over quantity, 
We turn down more business than we take on. I've had 187 investor sales calls in the last six months. We have only taken on 31 investors, okay? I genuinely want to work with people that want to work with me, and there's no other way around it. If I don't like you, I can't work with you. How the hell can I spend the next 10 years of my life going to bat for you when shit hits the fan? And it's real estate. Shit will hit the fan, right? Every day shit hits the fan. So I have to like you if I'm going to deal with the shit that's going to be happening to your portfolio, right? You have to like me too. You have to respect me. You have to trust me. And then we can potentially work together. It's like a marriage, okay? It's like a marriage. Um, so that's how we only focus and we only work with selected investors, okay? I do not know of any other company right now in the country that turns down business. They're all about instant gratification. They're all about making that profit right now. Okay? Now, that's all good and great, but if you take the, if you take the wrong investors on board, right, what's going to happen is one year, two years, three years, five years down the track, these investors are going to come out of the grapevines and they're going to start slandering you online, set, set, saying that you sold them a crap product in a crap area, whatever it may be. And then your Better Business Bureau rating is going to go down. When people Google your name and they Google your company, on the third page of Google, you're going to find dirt on your name. Ripoff Report is a great one, right? So once again, selected investors only. We're very picky with who we do business with, and we only work in B-class areas, okay? Now, there are different... There are a ton of different perceptions of the different types of asset classes in the market right now, okay? Um, my perception of a B-class area is Donald Trump's of a Z-class area, right? So it just depends on how you were brought up and how you were raised. Now, what I advise you guys to do is to jump online, go on to, just Google my name, Angela Ramora, the different types of asset classes. There's a blog, and you'll be able to find a little bit more depth about my beliefs on what is a B-class area, what is an A-class area, and what is a C-class area. Now, I'm just going to touch on it here briefly. So a B-class area is, is an area that has good infrastructure supporting a demand, be it a rental demand or a demand for sales. So for example, I'm going to touch on Toledo here. Once again, ProMedica Toledo Hospital. They're gentrifying the entire pocket there. They're a big employer in town. They've been there for a while. They're going to stay there for a while. There's always going to be a demand for rentals. There's always going to be a demand for sales. People want to rent there because they can go to work. People want to live there because they can go to work. And there's a ton of cool little things going around there. Another one is the um, Toledo, Un Toledo University, right? Um, 22,000 students and growing, right? There's always going to be students that are going to need a place to live. And believe it or not, there's a ton of young families that want to live in that pocket there because it's a neat and tidy little area. Right? So this is a, is a B-class area, right? Because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a good infrastructure there, there's a supply of demand, um, you're always going to get the property tenanted and you'll always be able to have a good exit strategy. Homes tend to be built in the 40s, 50s and 60s, there are no boarded up homes, very few vacant, there's no riffraff around, no shitty cars, I mean blue collar working class people. In Ohio right now, a lot of people are hard pressed for times, so they don't have that much money. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit difficult to get those rents, right? But, but they don't trash the place. They're not pigs. Does that make sense? Um, next one. I'm done with that. Go to Google, Angela and more at the different types of asset classes, and you'll get a little bit more in-depth about what, I, what my perception is on the asset classes. And tell Donald Trump I said hello. Um, properties sold at or below market value, okay? So we never sell a property for more than what it's worth. And once again, I do not know of any other turnkey company in the country that can pride themselves on saying that. The biggest and best turnkey companies in the country sell properties for more than what they're worth, and they justify that by saying that in order to continue delivering a great service once the sale has been made, they have to sell your property for more than what it's worth. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. If, as long as you're dealing with a legitimate company and they've got awesome property management, and they're going to stay true to the numbers that they promised to you on paper, and they're going, to, they're going to do their absolute best to hit those numbers that they promised to you on paper. Okay? So if you're not buying at market or below market value, well, then make sure then when you're paying more than what it's worth, that property management is on point, okay? And those guys are legitimate. And I'm going to throw out a company out. I'm going to throw out a company for you guys out there, Memphis Invest. Okay, the biggest and best turnkey real estate investment company in the country. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. And that's a company that we look up to and um, we want to copy them. And hopefully one day we're going to be bigger than them, right? Don't you love competition? It's awesome. I love it. Um, in-house property management, guys, that doesn't nickel and dime. Ohio Cashflow has in-house property management, okay? Once again, we do not make money when we property manage. We make money when we sell. 
Property management is just there to complement our sales. So when we tell you you're going to get a 13 to 15% gross cap rate on a particular property, our property management does their absolute best to hit those figures. We do not have any hidden junk fees. When I call you to wish you a happy birthday, I don't charge you $30 for it, okay? I've got two full-time maintenance guys that just go around, um, that just work around the clock fixing little repairs. When I unclog your toilet, I don't even charge you for it. Why? Why would I nickel and dime you to death on little hidden junk fees? It's going to piss you off. It's going to kill your return. You're not going to buy more properties from me, right? In the next three to five years, once I have 1,000 properties in the management, we might start breaking even and turning over a profit. Well, actually, we are breaking even now. It just depends. But we might start actually turning over a profit, okay? So in-house property management that doesn't nickel and dime. And this is your key, guys. This is your absolute key, no matter what it is that you're looking at doing. And please, if you take anything away from my presentation tonight, take this away. No pressure tactics and no gimmicks, okay? Forget about the people that are looking at instant gratification. Tell them to fuck off. I dropped it, okay? Who wants to take your money now and is not interested in your best interest for the long term? Piss them off. You do not want to work with these people, guys. I'm telling you, it is about delayed gratification. It's going to take you three, five, or ten years to get you to where you need to be. Okay? So please, please, ultimate question. Remember that ultimate question. Are you willing to spend six, nine, or 12 months of building a trust and relationship with me before we do business together? Okay? Last but not least, prompt communication. I mean, this is crucial. This is absolutely crucial, even, even, even with your business partners. I can't tell you how many times I've had an email that I've sent um, perceived in a wrong way, and I got myself into a ton of shit, and we had huge arguments, right? Because of, because of communication. Just because someone perceived my email in a different tone than what I actually wrote it, and it was an absolute nightmare, okay? Um, when you are investing out of state or out of country, or even in your own freaking backyard, you have to have good communication with all of the people that are involved in your venture, okay? I lost $25,000 around six months ago on a property which was two minutes from our office because I had the wrong contractors on site, first of all. They weren't loyal, honest, they were greedy, and they weren't respectful, and the communication was poor. I was so slammed with the day-to-day -day business that we had going on that I wasn't able to communicate with them um, and ask them, you know, what stage are we up to? How far is the rehab progress going? Do we have any issues and whatnot? Okay, I lost $25,000, literally, um, on a property two minutes from our office. Just insane, okay? Um, so, check this out. If someone says they're too busy to reply, hire a PA, right? If you're too busy to reply, you've got enough money that you can hire a PA that's just going to reply for you. Now, if she's too busy, hire another one, right? Hire two PAs. Just hire five people that are going to be your support staff, that are going to correspond with your investors, right? So no one is too busy to respond, okay? You have to have prompt communication, especially when you're investing out of state or country, okay? If someone is not prompt at communicating, I wouldn't do business with them, okay? Keep it mean by keeping it lean, guys. Less is more, okay? You do not necessarily have to add Quantity to your portfolios, you can add quality, and that is why a higher cash flow adds quality properties, quality investors, quality areas. I mean, I always like to say we are the best of the best. We are the Ferrari, Rolex, and Louis Vuitton of turnkey real estate. Branding, exclusivity, limited, right? So, good? Thank you. All righty. Ha, ah, here we go. My rags to riches story. <laughs> Eddie, put your phone down, mate. Come on. <laughs> All righty. Um, awesome. I love this one. Uh, this is a good one. The two most important days in your life, guys, are the day you were born and the day you found out why. Okay? The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you found out why. Check this out. It was around three years ago. Um... Uh, lowest point of my life, period, ever. And I'm just stressing to you right now, this is not a rags to riches story, okay? It's not a rags to riches story, but I just want to tell you where I was in the space of mind I was at back then. 
So my grandma passed away. My mum got diagnosed with cancer. I broke my left wrist. Okay, I couldn't afford to fix it. Um, I felt like the whole world was caving in. I had over a million dollars of debt in Australia. I had credit card debts, right? I wasn't getting along with my business partners, and this was when I was still based in Kansas City. I mean, the absolute fucking lowest point of my life, you guys have no idea. We were drinking $1 gas station coffees and eating peanut butter for breakfast to survive. Around three years ago, okay? When my grandma passed, something clicked in me. Um, I was on my knees, I was crying to Dominique for half an hour, I was drooling all over the floor and something clicked. I don't know what it was. And whatever clicked in my mind then, I picked myself back up, I went to the office, and I just started going gung-ho, busting ass. For nine months, we were doing cold calls, emails, I mean, you name it. Like hustling every single day, all day long. Okay, we had a little shitty spare office bench, internet, I don't even know, we stole it from someone else. We had our breakthrough moment after nine months, we established a relationship with a hedge fund and we sold 22 properties in literally in four weeks. And that gave us a starting capital to pay off some debts and start a higher cash flow and here we are today. Truly humbled to be where we are. Um, I guess when my grandma passed was when I found my purpose. Um, and I know that I had nothing more to lose. Literally, I had nothing more to lose. Mom had cancer, grandma died, my wrist was broken. I was fucking broke out of my ass, right? The only thing that you could take from me then was the shirt on my back, <laughs> right? It was, it was funny. Um, and uh, uh, where I'm going with this is I found my purpose. When she passed, I just, it, it was insane, guys. It was an insane feeling. And from that day to this day right now, I am fucking Superman. Superman. I feel no fear. I feel no pain. I feel no hunger. Okay? I can go, 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 go. 100 miles an hour. And what I do today is not for personal benefit. It is not for personal benefit. And that's what I mentioned here. It is not for money either. My purpose and why in life, as corny as it sounds, and I don't give a shit how corny you think it is, is not about me and it's not about money. It is about a legacy. Right now, this day, it is about securing the financial future of my loved ones. Dominique, Jalen, my mom, my dad, my family, my friends, everyone associated with a higher cash flow, our investors, okay? The people that are on board, the extra 10 people that we're hiring right now, that is my purpose right now. That is my why. It is about all of them. Once that is done, and once they are secure within the next three years, hopefully, then my purpose becomes something else. My purpose is about leaving a legacy. When I'm done, when I'm six feet under, I want my name on a building. Not like Trump Towers. I want it like Remora Institute for Cancer Research. So when I'm dead, there is something there that's going to last forever. Okay? That is my purpose. And I can tell you this. When your purpose is bigger than yourself and it's bigger than money, you will be Superman. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. You will not feel fear. You will not feel pain. You will not feel hunger, guys. No fear, no pain, no hunger. I'll put my fucking head through that wall if I need to put my head through that wall to get to where I need to be for my loved ones. Period. Okay? It is the most powerful feeling that you can ever experience. And it can come to you at any moment in your life. Now, I can't give you the answer today on how you can find your purpose. I don't know it. I also can't give you the answer on how you can find your why, but I can tell you what my perception is of how you can find your purpose and how you can find your why, okay? Your network equals your net worth, okay? Your network equals your net worth. The more people that you speak to on a daily basis, the more you will grow, not just as business owners and real estate investors, right? but individuals, okay? And you might find yourself in a story of their past or where, of where they have been or, or a story of what they are doing right now or a story of where they are going, okay? And these particular stories that you're going to hear from these people might inspire you. There might be something there that someone is going to say that will give you light, that will show you the way, that will, that will get you to where you need to be that will enable you to find your purpose and why in life, okay? I very much believe in this. 
I, I've always believed in this. I always knew that there was something bigger and better for me out there, right? I quit soccer when I was 18. I, I, I did play professional soccer. I didn't achieve the full level that I wanted to achieve. And then I worked my ass off as a laborer. But I always knew there was something bigger and better out there. There was something bigger and better out there. Right now, I, I'm loving it, guys. I'm absolutely loving it. You could take everything away from me. Take it all. I don't care. I don't care. I'll run around freaking naked, right? But I will make shit happen. I will find a way to make it again and to make shit happen, right? Because I have a purpose and I have a why. So, and last but not least, here are some ending questions for you guys. Take a screenshot of, oh, you can't take a screenshot. Take, it, take a photo of that if you want to. Um, my ending questions to you today are, what are you doing right now to get your step closer of where you need to be? And I mean right now. Okay, right now you're in this room. What are you going to do when you get out of that door? Right? It, they say that the little things done consistently will enable the big things to just fall into place. Al Pacino on any given Sunday, right? It's the inches. It's the inches in everything that you do every single day, right, that will make the big picture happen. It's like a miracle, guys. I can't tell you, but it's those phone calls. It's those emails. It's those meetings that we were busting ass for nine months before just the big things just started falling into place. Like, oh, shit, look at this. Another interview. Oh, shit, prime time Chicago Radio wants to call me now. All kinds of stuff are happening. But we put in those yards. Every single day we do PR. Every single day we send out emails. And here's a plug, um, a quick plug. I'm speaking tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, I don't know what room it is. It's the power hour with the dingo. You're going to hear about how to get free publicity and how to negotiate. So come check those out. They're going to be awesome, right? So every single day we send those emails to get that PR, right? It's the little things, guys. So what are you doing right now to get your step closer to where you need to be? Okay, where are you going? Why are you going there? What are your end goals? Why do you get out of bed every single morning? Every single time that I drive to my office, there's millions of people driving past me and I always think to myself, what are they doing? Where are they going? What's their purpose in life? What's their why? They go work nine, they start nine, they finish five, then they go home and then they watch TV. And? And then they go work the next day, nine, they come back home five, then they watch TV. And? then in 60 years, you're going to drop dead. Woo, awesome fucking life. Not really. Shit, in my opinion. So where are you going? Why are you going there? Why do you do what you do every single day? What is your purpose? Why are you here? Right? For whom? For whom? Remember, your purpose cannot be money and it can't be yourself. You will not last. Check this out. Have you ever hit snooze on your alarm? I bet your ass you have. So if you do it for money, if your purpose is money, why do you hit snooze on your alarm? You're going to go to your nine to five. You're going to make money. Don't hit snooze. Get your ass out of bed. Guess what? When my alarm goes off, it's like a fucking bee sting in my ass. I'm out of bed. I'm already going 100 miles an hour. I'm Snapchatting, Periscope, pop, 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 going, all right, Dom, let's go. Boom. Hit the door with my head. Shit, that hurts. Right? Why do you do what you do every single day? For whom? Is it for yourself? Is it for money? It has to be bigger than yourself and it has to be bigger than money. You will not last. You will hit snooze. When it's for someone else or something else, you do not want to let them down. You do not want to let them down. You will let yourself down, but you will not let someone else down. Okay? Is it for a bigger and better purpose than for yourself or money? You must know the answers to these questions, guys. Ask me the answers to these questions. I can freaking spout them out straight away. 3 a.m., wake me up at 3 a.m. I can tell you the answers to any one, of, any one of these questions. Okay? You have to know the answers to these questions. Thank you. The best business card is the Google business card, um, as you can see. Well, actually, do you guys want to buy my course? No, I'm kidding. There is no course. <laughs> um, Search for a higher cash flow, the real estate dingo. Get in touch. Thanks for attending. And last little slide there. I'm not asking for a vote. Just like my page on Facebook, the real estate dingo. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Any questions? How long do we have? Let's get the drinks out now. Eddie, tell them to bring all the drinks in this room, mate. <laughs> and we'll close the door. <laughs> sure, mate.
Great question, mate. Um, look, right now we're doing 10 to 15 properties per month. We're looking at scaling that to 20 plus properties. Um, within the next three to five years, we want to be doing 50 plus properties per month. So we're literally, you know, going after Memphis Invest. We want to take them off the throne. I think they're doing 600 plus right now. We can't take them revenue-wise, but I know we can take them by volume of deals. Um, look, it just depends on how much work the particular property needs. I'll give you an example. Um, we normally, right, like right now, we're sold out. So we, we are literally sold out two to three months in advance. We've got a waiting list of investors waiting for new inventory. So we hook a deal on the contract. I present it to an investor, okay? They want to go ahead with that particular property. Um, as soon as we close on the property, it is normally two weeks of renovations and another two weeks to get it tenanted. I always like to, I always like to be safe and say it's a four to six week process before the property is renovated and tenanted and we close on it. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's a little bit longer. On average, it's around four to six weeks. All righty? Anyone else? Come on, give me some questions. Yeah, mate. Now, are you doing the property management on those properties? Well? Yes. Yes, in-house property management. We do not manage anyone else's properties. We only manage what we sell. Mate, property management is a pain in the ass. It is the shittest business you could possibly imagine. We hate it, but it's a necessary evil. Because as I said, if you want more business through word of mouth and referrals, if you want a good rating online, you have to make sure that when you sell a product, that those numbers are getting delivered in real life, right? And if they're not, you have to do your absolute best to hit those numbers. And that's where prompt communication comes into play, right? The worst call that I have to make is calling my investor to tell him your tenant's not paying, we're gonna have to evict. I hate making those calls. So I'm trying to get other people on board to make those calls for me now. But um, look, it's a necessary evil. Um, you know, we, we have to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have to do it, we want to do it. And, um, you know, we're going to keep doing it for, forever. I mean, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a side of the business that we don't like, but we, we've incorporated that into our sales, um, and it complements our sales, and we keep getting more sales because, as I said, if the investors are doing well, they're making money, they buy more, they tell mom, dad, brother, sister, cousins, friends, and before you know it, we've got a snowball effect, and, I mean, you're not even going to see my pretty face on video anymore because we're just going to have new business, you know, coming through the doors from the existing investors talking, talking great about us. Alrighty. Anyone else? Yes, love. I have two questions. Actually. Sure. What markets are you in? Are you just in Ohio? And then what kind of returns can you offer to your investors? Awesome. Um, yes, we are just in Ohio. So we've got two offices right now, Toledo and Middletown. Ten full-time staff between those two offices. The markets we work in are Toledo, Middletown, um, Cincinnati, Dayton, and we're slowly expanding into Columbus. Okay. The average bread and butter price range of one of our turnkey properties is between $55,000 to $70,000. It's a three bedroom, one bathroom house. Sold at market or below market value, okay, in a blue collar working class area, tenanted to blue collar working class people, always located within good proximity to good infrastructure. Um, the rents tend to be between $800 to $1,000 per month in rent, okay? Um, the gross cap rate is 13 to 15% gross. Now, what we include in our deductions to reach that gross cap rate is number one, property management fees, number two, insurance, and number three, taxes, okay? Now, that is not your net figure, but what I have come to learn is a lot of investors have different formulas on their deductions, right? Some people like to use a 20% deduction on maintenance and vacancy. Some people will only use a 10%. Then there's other folks that like to discount over 10 years using some stupid ass capex formula, which I've never freaking even heard of, right? So I leave that up to them. Do your own deductions. If the numbers fit what you're looking for and they suit your end goal, the investment might be worth pursuing further. All righty. Anyone else? Is that it? Awesome. Thank you. We're done. Cool. Thanks, guys.